Okay, so maybe let me start back in time a little bit. This is the presentations that I, one of the slides that I gave uh, back in 2012, 2013, in Yongsuto Conservatory for the International Conference for Formal Voices. And in some way, I really felt in debt to Bernard Lansky for inviting me for that um, international symposium. Because after came in, coming back from that symposium, we wrote a proposal for this symposium. So that's somehow, in, in some way, this is a kind of um, direct response to the symposium that Yongsuto has been hosting every two years. So um, this is something that I present on that day together, uh, discussing with some of our colleagues in Singapore and of course in, from other uh, institutions from international universities. And this is what I asked on that day. And I think I was at that time was, um, still uh, being a kind of lecturers, working for student affairs, but this already hit my mind. So first, at that time, uh, the global warming was really hit kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So we have a growing numbers of music graduates. We have the melt away audiences. And we still have no option for alternative uh, energy. So it means that, like very much like what Robert Putieta mentioned yesterday morning. So it's exactly the same thing. And, and how, I mean, as um, music conservatory in, in this part of, the re of part of the world, how do we respond to our own climate? Here, so for example, I really like, um, the, the most favorite one that I like is um, the, uh, the 10,000, 1,000 years uh, Thai ensembles. And that's the name of the concert in some way because I mean the whole uh, numbers, uh, how we call it, the age of all play performers combined together is 1,000 years. So in, in some way, do we, how, how do we fit together with all these kind of changing of um, so much variety within the music scenes today and how do we taking out from those uh, melting, in some way, classical music of a uh, com completely temp t uh, different temperature back to this world with island and everything. So when I was um, asked to join uh, the Princess Guyana Institute of Music in five years ago, this really came to mind, this really kind of really hit me that we are will be, and we will be at that time, among the 90 institutions of music in Thailand. So we already have so many universities teaching music. And the word conservatory, what does it mean by being a conservatory in Thailand? I remember stuck on, uh, in traffic together with Thomas, uh, um, uh, the director of Studio Music for Big Back Friend, and he asked, what are you trying to conserve out of Thailand? And, and this, is, this is really, kind of, I mean, stuck on the traffic with these questions is not nice <laughs> in some way. So it was that a really, really long time. And, and in some way, I, I, I felt that I really have to sort this problem out in some way. And at that time, uh, do we want to have this? Do we really like, uh, in Professor Dieter talk this morning, that like in... In Bali, how do we how do we go? Do we do we try to keep this as a kind of like a, a feudal kind of music that is perceived, or do we really go the other way and just kind of make the music that sounds boringly, um, just kind of like playing first with and that's all? And do we really neglect it one and keep the other, or how do we uh, distinguish between the coke and the water? So if you are here a few days, then you would notice what we talk about. So then also, do we keep this kind of same way of teaching, like that, do we still teach the same way that we did 200 years ago or not? And so at that time, we were starting to look for uh, different uh, places of how music has been taught in other universities around the world. And then we see that, okay, you can see this is from Den Haag, which, um, really uh, with an honor that the director of Den Haag is together with us this morning at the symposium. So in some way that we, we might not need to see music in the same way that we see anymore. And this is just to share with some of our um, international colleagues here. So when you know that the school start with the princess, and of course the school start with the princess, even though she's not a musician, but definitely she is a really wonderful audience. 
and of course music cannot be without the audience and to have a perspective of the audience in my older time really can help us with something. So I'll just show you really quickly uh, something here. Um, the princess mentioned something about a what amateur, about a person that, if you want to do music, you then love it. The second one, and she mentioned something that if you miss her as a person that really um, have this opportunity to study in the schools, then if you miss her, if you really want to do something good for her, then we just have to continue her vision. The next one, and if you really, um, this is one example that um, the princess has spoken at one point, and she mentioned something, giving examples of um, her brothers, who st our, uh, King Rama the Eighth, Rama the Ninth, that at one point, the, when, when they were still young, and to remember that both of them are taking their, sorry, their legs into the, the steering wheel of the car, and somehow it looks so cute, that looks so cute, and everybody's kind of taking the pictures. And she was trying to do exactly the same, but no one is interested in what she did. So in some ways, you realize that repeating other people's <coughs> inventions is not always works, so maybe there could be something else that we should do. So this is why we are trying to think that maybe in we want something new in our in our way of thinking. And of course this is another thing that we <coughs> really want to do is that we have to be know how to live together with the society and all this kind of thing. And we have to because musicians has to still be together with the society, and the last things is that we must learn how to be modest. I mean, in terms of music, then um, there's always plenty of things that we can learn about music, and so there's no use of being boosting up all, all the time. So maybe modesty is really a good thing, not only for as as a social life, but something as a musician when you play ensembles. This is the way, the best way of doing ensembles, isn't it? In some way, so that's that's why the school came to this uh, philosophy that music de la vie de la terre, which is music of life, music of land, and how does did it connect it to us now? So this is maybe is a little bit because this t this year is five years of the PGVM, so somehow for the P PYO also and for the PGVM, so we did a little bit of like uh, review back of what kind of things that we did for the last five years. Because at that time when we started, there's we didn't uh, start with um, accepting new students just yet. So what we did is that we worked together already because you might see that in this area with uh, such a high security measure uh, around all this area, and we have to find some way to know th where we situated. We have to be integrated into the land of Bangihan, this area. So that was a really kind of first project. And I think you were there, right? You were there together together with us. So at that time, th thank you very much for the people that I say that the colleagues uh, together with us here. And of course, that's another project that we did. And, and also, of course, that's another project that we also, um, that was the f one of the first things that we did here. If you actually go to the other side of the wall, you will see that these walls are actually all painted with graffiti. A any of the students have seen that? It's actually on the other side of the wall. So that was already kind of very first project that we want. We don't want anything that like wipe clean, but something that we really try to ask questions. And on the left hand side, this is we ask the children from this area to. Uh, come, uh, come. Uh, we, we go <coughs> out and, and work together as a workshop together with them, and let them imagine what kind of uh, character, what kind of person they want to grow up to be, and then they painted all these things, and then they brought into the schools, and then they come and see the concerts, and then collect this identity back. <coughs> but in some way, we try to to not only build something only from ourselves, but it's actually really learning what other people expected from us as well. So this is how, and this is another project that we did, and we asked the children also to help us design the logo. So we try to think of everything that not just coming from us, 
but really coming as a sharpening. Okay, now I'm getting to the next part. Also, I mean, of course, we tick all the boxes. We did uh, things that schools do, schools of music do. We did the BYO, as the Zheng Guang mentioned. But what is really the core? What is What are we trying to do in PGVAM? Some of you that already here might notice already that we have this thing of core. We must contain the core as coke, still having coke, mm -hmm. and not selling everything as water. So we still have the core. We still have to play music. And uh, when people ask me, I mean, can, can they, for example, some of, of some of our students wanted to do composition as a major, and I said, well, yeah, maybe, just for now, maybe do music as well, play music. You can do anything else, but classical music must be a basic for you. It's not something that you have to achieve in four years. It is already, you have to think of it as a, as a basic. That's to start with. But <coughs> outside of learning about playing music, you have to know things around it. You have to know how music was made and how, um, and how is it related to your life. How is it related to your life with this? The general education is those kind of things. And so you know that some of those our friends that are here together with our, in our schools, they, we know that our general education have a really strange kind of um, experiment all the time. I'll show you later. And of course, and this is something that we really want our students to, to try, that try to find some way to travel between all these things. So that's why a lot of things that we do are project-based. A lot of things that we do is not only contained in the school. So that's why I, I answered one of our colleagues yesterday that maybe when we talk about, even though we don't have a Thai music classes, but we have no um, reserve in having a Thai music ensemble performing together in the International Symposium of Classical Music, let's say. So then it means that we really, really nourish uh, the musical environments that happen in our schools. So. What do we what do we hope to see? This is happened just after the um, uh, curriculum revised uh, earlier this year. That we would like to see that in PCUAM, we're not only looking for a performance as a core, but at the same time, the student has to learn the musicianship and also be able to create and integrate and the works for themselves for the future. So in this case, some students might try this and then this and then this and then this and then at the end they will learn a bit to that's that's what we hope and some student might already start from the very beginning and then start to open up some people already coming in as something that completely open so this we took from one of the projects that myself and dr sean david i think we did it a while ago, this is one of the case studies that we did. Um, we were asked by a friend from the Faculty of um, <coughs> uh, Decorative oh, Arts yes. in Silicon University, just to send one person, just, just to go and work in the workshops um, and bring <coughs> the music students and see what we can learn, what we can make from all these things. So we kind of like, yeah, yeah, we'll go. We would like to take them and we just go. And this is what we did. And we had one project. Um, we asked the composers. I have one of the students who is a composer. Uh, he wanted to study composer. He's a pianist, but he somehow kind of refused to write anything of the new music. He said, "I just want to study a normal composition with you, nothing else, not contemporary." Um, and what we did is that, in some way, I so asked, "Yeah, you just go into that workshop, and then let's see what kind of things you hear from that workshop, and we'll see." And then when we come back, and then they ask, okay, okay, for the first class, don't think of anything contemporary. Just maybe bring your Beethoven sonata. Just bring it. And then what he did is that he bring the copy of the score. So I asked him to bring a copy of the score. And of course, we cut it. As uh, the son of student might be accustomed, we cut it. And he asked, I asked, like, which part do you like the most? And he started cutting all those things, and then we reconnected it. And now I asked him, okay, then can you try to maybe instead of playing the way that you play, can you try to re replace those sounds with the sounds that you found in the jewelry workshops? And that's exactly what he did. So he did the whole piece with prepared piano without me asking to make it with a new sound. So in some way, I mean, it just comes naturally. And the other guy who played trumpet last night, 
this is, he's also a composer. But this time I asked him, like, just go to the workshop. Don't use any recording. And when he comes back, I asked him to imitate the sounds that happen in the workshops. And then, and then make a recording. And then Dr. Schoenewit made it into a really, really wonderful themes of the whole workshop things, using only with his sounds, imitating the tools. So in some way, um, coming to the, the scores that Professor Dittimann um, showed us this morning, I mean, to me, coming back that, do we have to learn about the B-flat major scales? Do we have to really write, uh, how do we relate it to, to ourselves now? So somehow, when after all these projects, when I come back to looking at these scores, and, and they might uh, say something to you guys, I just see this as kind of like, just general locations area of where you are. This could be the moon. This could be the speed of where you want it, how, want, how fast you want to move. This is your gestures, how would you like to do with the ornaments, how giggly you are, and how much emphasis you want to put on, then it becomes excellent. How long you want to stay on things, then it becomes a matter. Then it's, for example, um, um, and then how would you like to make that action, a bow or down bow? Which part of the body do you want to use? How much do you want to press that energy to an audience, then come dynamics. And this is my uh, most favorite one, Accelerando. In some way, uh, I remember this talk from uh, John Bruce Gaston four years ago in the symposium. He mentioned that nowadays, like um, in Thai music, Thai traditional music, uh, the, the ideas of Accelerando changes. T today, uh, a lot of Thai musicians play according to metronome. So everything becomes so metrical. And, and then it doesn't have the same organic feelings that actually Rando used to mean in those old days. So see, then, then it becomes something really, really wonderful in, in some way that I start to see, even when you see the scores, then it's a lot more things that happen to us than the scores. So somehow for me, it's coming from reading the score to rereading the score, relearning the score and forgetting what scores mean, those, those kind of things. And maybe this is something that might help to explain our students of why there are lots of things that we are trying to do. I have one very good example from our friend Lana here. This is one of the one of the things, the projects that we did. I asked this is all the first year students of what kind of ideas they wanted to do with that music. So she wrote it. Very nice, I really like that. I really like that. And then also you see more of this happening. I asked what kind of crazy projects they wanted to do with their music. Somebody said, I want to produce and perform opera underwater. Second one, I want to accompany bird songs. The third one, I want to imitate nature's sound. This is first year student. Fourth, I want to travel and record all sound. This is from the girls who performed Colin McPhee last night. And this is lovely, train dogs to play piano because it has better ears than me. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the reason behind it. And then the next one, I want to make a performance which includes sounds of cooking. And she's kind of like, do it in the restaurant. And then the third one, uh, next one, make a choir with all the body sounds. And she specifically said the sound from the tummy when you're hungry. Something like that. And I think uh, it was the, uh, before lunch class, so I can see that. <laughs> okay. And then I want to accompany Arabic dance with big brass and percussion sections with the orchestra. So these are actually coming from the students, PGM students first year. So how do I, I think my job as a music educator, I have to make sure that these survive within them for four years. I can't risk the chance of them losing these dreams. So this is, this is why, what we're trying to do here. In, uh, so we, we have all these crazy ideas in the school, so excuse me, student, if you have all this kind of thing, of the, of the pains, please understand. Okay, so this is one of the pieces that, this recital project, this is a subject that we call. I think this is, uh, belongs to some of the third year, and instead it's a piano piece but there's absolutely no reason like, uh, that you keep practicing without hearing anything. So then I asked her to um, orchestrate. And if you can see very quickly, you can see that now the, the ideas of playing that piece is completely changed. Once you can have the orchestra, the whole orchestra in your head, then the way you change it 
uh, do play plays changes. And also this is from one of our students, Nathan Woodhurst, the horn player. He has this piece for a solo French horn, which, I mean, uh, he, he played well, of course, he played very good. But I asked him, maybe, instead of imagining yourself playing to yourself, why don't you write a piano accompaniment part for it? And then he did. And in some way, you can hear that now, instead of playing just a little by himself, you can hear that he's really doing a really good job. And th this is his next one, by our viola player, Patra Bot. And he did an in interpretation of uh, Viola Sonata by Rebecca Clark. So you can see that he's actually in some way like making an analysis on the... He's almost like making an analysis, but using a visual. We're not looking for a perfect edit. I think thanks to SOJD, we share this project together. And in, in some ways, not just making a visual representation, but s reflect of how he sees the pieces. And this is another one by really fabric friends of us. One of Vida Sonata. So you might you might recognize. So in some way, she put her characters into the sounds and into the interpretations of the music. So this is how they try to relate it to themselves. And this is by Tintin, who will be speaking later. Uh, his interpretation of Debussy to Ligeti. <laughs> And then at the end, so she did a research on all this Spanish dance and then which each uh, style of Spanish dance. <laughs> and we were really surprised uh, on that day, myself as a Jedi and as a day, when she presented the projects. She came with a dance. So she herself, as a violinist, came and presented us with a Spanish dance and she improvised half of the piece for us. And then that's the way she learned about the piece. Not by only rehearsing, but actually by dancing itself. So this is quite amazing. And this is, I'm not putting her in the costume, but this is her. Okay, and this is another project that we did also working together with um, the um, library in, in, in the central Bangkok, TK Park, that we asked the students to work together uh, 
pick one book from from the stories and just maybe find some way to connect that pieces. No, not pick the book. They have the repertoire first and try to match that repertoire to the book. And this is from a photography book by our Aunt Pao's here. Luckily, she's went out for a toilet now, so this is time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> the next one. Of course, she's playing with some French repertoire. So this is some way for them to, to learn about all these things. And of course, Don with his birds, Messiaen. And we just found a uh, really wonderful book that collects sounds of the nature. So in some way, he was able to find the sounds of the birds that was written for that score. So in some way, this is learning around the music that we are interested in. And she went to space. And this guy stayed with the double bass and still curious with the double bass start with one string or four string or five string. Of course, at the time of learning, there weren't convinced. You can see, them, but not all of them are uh, convinced that it's really hard to, to get them going, but it's fine. And, and I guess, like, of, of course, there are some resistance. Even we try to do a program like it's not easy. Um, even for our faculties to kind of encourage the students to, to do a program note themselves. But this is what happened last year. We still in the process, as I say. Some of our students, we didn't ask them to use some of these ideas. This is Chitran Kanang. I think she already tried to use all this kind of, kind of thing to represent something about music that she can't speak of. Uh, Tanaporn work on uh, Ravel concerto. And she was working on the ideas of self-reflections. But in some way, she decided to have a mirror in a bit of her concert. We have Saranda talking <laughs> about the music. And we have a lot of first year, this, uh, last year, the second year this year, explaining about the music in the way that they wanted to do. So these are the things that we try. And we, of course, bombarded them with different things like uh, the Project Weeks. We have uh, Peter Will working with us with the Project Weeks. Every year we have keep having all these things. And this is one of the improvisations which I'm sure you will see later. Sometimes it's fun. Sometimes it can go quite far. <laughs> <laughs> and then we try to get them to perform in different venues. This is Al Ajahn, Ajahn Dietomar, together last year. Thank you very much for helping to explore all these areas to, to happen. And this is from the symposium last year. And of course, one of the projects that I really... Okay, two more minutes and then I'm done. Okay, this is a project I'm really, really, really happy with. This is one of our Fijian singers, whom you might see them perform already on, on, on Wednesday with, uh, with all these graphic scores. And they are extremely open-minded. And I think this coming back to the five years that we started earlier, that the school is not only just about creating new types of sea bass or fish, to not, we're not creating musicians for the world, but we are, as Robert Pitieta said for his schools, that we are trying to create musicians that will go out in the world and lead the world. And it's not just um, but they, they can't, if they have no one to work with. For example, this one, <laughs> this one, you might see the little girls, she was also in our group. The costume was designed by our pianist. And of course, our violinist is there. And you can see, this is really lovely. In some way, that um, uh, the girl in the middle is a so soprano singer. And of course, one of the actors is also a pianist, who did the screaming piece earlier. And of course, this is another picture <laughs> of me. This is the guy who did Rebecca Clark, uh, viola, um, viola sonata interpretations. You will see him later. I think he's a legendary one. He's a mid one on the left, right hand side. You see him later. And then we have, of course, it's not easy. It's not easy to always convince our students to do different things. But I'm really glad, I'm really grateful of them that sometimes they decide to take a lot of, of, of leap of faith in making all this happen. It's the same man. We this guy. <laughs> I, sometimes I don't see that it's not different, the two sides of performing. And of course, 
This is some of the projects that they did by themselves, that they find that uh, this is from that couple. This is students' project that they organized themselves, inviting different pupils coming together. And of course, they start to develop their own fan club. Here, and here, and here. <laughs> so, this is, this is something that we are trying to, maybe we have a journalism, of course. We're not taking out what we meant to do as a conservatory of teaching classical music. We also have a Jean-Gotter Jean who's still doing forte piano. But these are our audience. The same guys who did all that things, and they kept coming back, <laughs> even for other concerts. So, so I'm gonna leave this point, of course. We are trying to do s something here. Sometimes life hard. <laughs> yeah, really kind of, most of the time, <laughs> trying to uh, kind of entangle that, to tangle things. Sometimes it's fun to be working together. And we don't think of a team, a Fijian team, separate from what we do in the school. If he's still here, he's already doing a stage manager for today. So, see? And, and in some way, that coming back to that point, Coming back to that point, getting back to the climate that we have, do we really gonna stay as Nigel Osborne mentioned about, Kinkerson uh, mentioned that music is only an auditory cheesecake. Do we only gonna keep Coca Cola? You know, realizing that there could be different things. Do we stay in our practice room like a farm fish? Or do we think of music in a, a bit more different way, that music is something that around us, supporting us, and maybe you can't really grasp what the singular meaning, the singular way of what the subject of music should mean. Could we live in this myth and realities of making myth a reality and making realities a myth? Okay, so thank you very much for today.